Okay, uh, welcome. Uh, we're here for our very first Valpa Life Media Summit. Uh, we had a great time having Governor Daniels here last week, and we thought, you know what, let's use the facility and get some other collaborative discussions going on. Um, so we've invited Dave Woodson here of DaveWoodson.com uh, and Steve Dalton. Thanks, you know, yeah, try to keep the flash a little bit to the minimum press. Um, <laughs> Uh, we've got a lot of the local media covering this event. We won't do it live. We're, we're going to actually edit this out. Kick it off. It's social media week coming up next week. Um, that's obviously something that someone in your realm of work is familiar with, somebody in your realm of work is familiar with. When did you first get engaged with any of the social media stuff and why? Uh, you mind if I start? Um, I'd say six years ago. I was active in politics, as you know, and I had a friend say to me, Steve, you know, it'd be nice because I read a couple of the newspapers a day, and I, it'd be awesome if you'd just, like, recap what the newspaper said and then give me your spin on it. Because I don't know that the newspapers are always right or wrong or they haven't have a bias or not. Maybe, who knows? So just give me your spin on it. So I started my first blog. I was a blogger before I was anything else, and my blog was basically regurgitating news that had already been written by somebody else with the Steve spin, if you will. Right. Dalton's briefs, it was called at that point in time, not the underpants, but the but the briefs. At, and at Dalton's briefs at is Dalton where briefs. you could find him online. That's right, and uh, so that, it grew. You know, it, it's it's also self-made, homemade, you learn a little bit, and then you find out somebody else is doing something like Dave is doing some great things, and you say, teach me how you do that. And it becomes blogs, or it becomes uh, Facebook, which hun hundreds of millions of people are now engaged in, or Twitter, which perhaps a little less people, but more frequent and high impact. And you, just, you teach yourself, and as you teach yourself, you find some places, just like anything else in life, that are, that are people you like to engage with. It's, it's like going to a party. Yep. It's like going to a school event or hanging out at your house with some friends. You find who you like to engage with, you find who you don't want to engage with, and you hang out with the people <laughs> you like. And social media is the same. And it's been fun, and it's a cool way to have uh, 4,000 friends even though you don't know them all. That's a great <laughs> point. Like, how about you? Uh, I guess I got on uh, price. I got started blogging in late 07. I was a mortgage blogger. Got on Twitter, Facebook, not too much after that. In fact, I, mean, I was like one of the last ones to get on MySpace because... I just didn't like it. Um, Twitter was like the first one that really got me going because I was on the radio and I kind of kicked off the air for reasons I, I know why. Because I, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go full time, but I missed that having that voice of saying something to a thousand, two thousand, three thousand people. Now it versus sixteen thousand, and so it was it was a great way to get my voice out there even more. My sarcasm, what have you. But I was also, especially on the blogging, a great way to get noticed regionally, nationally, internationally at some point. And uh, so I guess about late 07, I think I really jumped on it hard. Met Steve not too much after that and been very collaborative ever since. And, and it, there is that fun aspect of it all. It is that fun aspect where you, you, you see people like, well, I know that guy from somewhere. And it's like, oh, yeah, because he tweets or yep. he's on Facebook and what have you. And, and it's a great way just it's a great way to get to know people. And it's great. And I think I've said this before. Um, the person with the most friends wins because, I don't know, last year people always oh, still the still tea of me for using the wife and the girl. But you said you used to... Just, how I remembered you. you how you, I how, even knew you. How you paid attention to me. And it was like, and it's not any derogatory to my wife or daughter. I just don't want to say their names, generally. Yeah. So how does, you know, fast forward, you've been doing it six years. You've been doing it so, since 07. We've just really been in it a couple of years. You know, how do most of the people that are still not really immersed in this, how do they just not get scared as heck and say, I, just, I want to run away. This is way too complicated for me. Yeah, I think there's two points. One... We are self-taught. Nobody went to college for this. There's no mm -hmm. such thing, or maybe there is. Now, there wasn't. There yeah. wasn't. Uh, we're all self-taught. And, and if I hate to say this about the three of us, but if the three of us are self-taught, just about anybody can figure <laughs> this out. So I think naturally what happens is Facebook is the easiest to pick up. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people every day try Facebook and have that aha moment where they find the alumni association at their high school and reconnect yeah. with somebody they haven't talked to for 20 or 30 years. So I, I don't think it's that difficult. I, I think the, ne point. the next level, which becomes uh, more strategic, which becomes more how do I actually take advantage of social media, that gets to be more of a business strategy or a campaign strategy in the political world. And I think maybe what we're going to find is if 2010 was the year of social media, I think 2011 is the year where we decide whether or not we want to do it ourselves. 
or outsource it to somebody who's a specialist at doing that. Right. I, I think 2010 was the year where everybody tried Facebook. And maybe some people tried Twitter. And a few tried LinkedIn, even though it's confusing and looks like a resume. But they all tried it. Now we've morphed forward into 2011, and all those triers who haven't posted anything on their Facebook page for six months are going, I thought this was supposed to make me a bunch of money. I, I thought I was going to have 5,000 friends, and Justin Bieber was going to call me. And, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I thought this was going to do something. Yep. And, and it hasn't. And so then they have to make the decision, is somebody going to get really good at this in my small organization? Or am I going to ask somebody who's really staying on the cutting edge, like Valpo Life, like Dave, like a company like ours, and I'm going to ask them to handle this for me? And there's some challenges in that, the authenticity, the yep. transparency, the how do you become friends with an empty ghost of an entity on, online, a business ghost, if you will. But I, I think that this will be the year that we deal with that issue. And is there an analogy when you look at other communication processes and companies to say, hey, we've learned how to outsource stuff yes. before? I'm no longer changing my oil. I said that to you earlier. <laughs> I, I, and my wife may disagree when she watches the video. I can change oil. I don't really want to, and I can't do it for 19 bucks. So I, I may as well have somebody who changes oil change the oil. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer, uh, and never did, put up my own billboards on the highway. Uh, never did design my own ads for a newspaper. Never did voice over my own radio commercials. So we're pretty comfortable outsourcing marketing. Yep. We're pretty comfortable outsourcing our taxes. We're pretty comfortable outsourcing things that require some expertise. Things that I could do, my own taxes. But every year it changes, and there's new this and new that, and 2,700 pages of laws. Maybe I ought to have somebody do it who does it every day. Yep. I think social media or new media or whatever this, this niche is will begin to be a place where experts, not just the geeky guy in his underpants in the basement who knows how to run his computer, but somebody who's actually... Don't, uh, don't talk about me that way. <laughs> but I was like, I'm in the bunker too, so I'm like, who are you talking about here? But I think experts, people who, lo who love this, who, who are good at engaging, who are influencers. What a cool word that we're going to have to deal with. What is an influencer and how do they... In what's the new digital version of a Pied Piper? We're going to have to deal with what that is. So, so it's not just set up a Facebook and they'll come. I don't think so. I, I think for maybe for a little while it was because it was so new and it was so novel. Now, one, you can't keep track. So they may have come once, but they never come back. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a website. Set up the static, pretty website that looks a whole lot like your brochure, but it happens to be digital. They come one time and then they never come back because it doesn't do anything. Yep. And there's nothing functional about it. It just says the same thing that the, that the printed piece did. Uh, I, I think you have to engage. Yep. When you go to a cocktail party, when we talk about Twitter being like a cocktail party, when you go to a cocktail party and there's people all milling around at this party, uh, and what, what eventually happens? There's some crowd culture that happens where eventually the bulk of the people are standing around the most interesting person in the room. Mm -hmm. And that interesting person happens to be funny and engaging or controversial, and they're throwing things out that you didn't expect, and that's who you want to hang out with. You want to hang out with the guy who's got a great story that maybe you've all heard, but he tells it cooler than anybody else, and he's got something controversial to lay down, and he can badger, and he can take it when you badger back. He's not thin-skinned. You don't want to hang out with the guy who's in the other corner who just joined Amway, and his only shtick is 19.99, and you can have my kit. And he says it over and, <laughs> and over, over and over, over and again. again. And maybe he starts it out by saying, I wanted to say this one more time in case you missed it when I said it four minutes ago. For yep. the record, 1999, and you can join Amway. You don't want to talk to that guy. He's not fun. We've seen <laughs> it where there's an awful lot of people that I think forget. Social is the first word in social network, and they assume network, oh, it's a broadcast. Yeah. So I'm going to take my marketing message and I'm going to blast it out to everybody. And they don't necessarily understand that you got to reach back and you got to ask questions. And sometimes it's... It's not just a throughput to go this way. It really is meant to be an interactive pipe. <laughs> I don't want you to keep poking me in the chest and say, have you heard, have you heard, have you heard? Like, like Steve says, $20 for my kit, $20 for my kit. I don't want to be poked in the chest all the time. Yeah. In fact, I'll ignore you at some point. And then, then where does that get you? But if you're engaging, if you want to talk about politics, you want to talk about sports, because I know somewhere down the back of my mind, you should know this, that I know you sell Amway or you sell mortgages or you sell real estate or you sell Valpo Life. I know that, that that does this. And so when someone asks me, he's like, well, I'm looking for a good a way to get online, call Chris. He's on Valpo Life. And that's what ultimately is what you want. You want to stay top of mind, but you don't want to be top of mind for all the negative reasons. Yep. Because I'm constantly poking you in the chest. 
We just wanted to say thank you very much from our sponsor today for the show, Valpo Velvet Ice Cream. Normally, we charge tens of thousands of dollars to be a sponsor of this segment because it's so <laughs> widely watched. Today, I actually took one pint of peanut butter cup ice cream, or one quart uh, whatever yes. this is, one whatever, yes, one quart of peanut butter <laughs> cup ice cream. And I took it because Kathy Brown is awesome. She's a friend of mine. She's wonderfully fun and a great supporter of Apple Life. So today's sponsorship, which will be enjoyed by Dave and Steve and I. So, so the fact that I'm on a diet doesn't matter to anything? No, like it's completely immaterial. <laughs> <laughs> but a great, great example is that Valpo Velva is very personal online. Yeah, there. I, to and me, that's the example I would use. I got to know um, Facebook and Twitter, et cetera, but one of the first people I got to know better was Kathy Brown at Valpo Velvet Ice Cream. And the best way in the world that Valpo Velvet, let me show you here, Valpo Velvet Peanut Butter Cup Ice Cream gets the word out is not through traditional advertising means. It's through their Facebook page. I was there today for lunch. And a person came in and said, hey, I saw the special. I saw what you guys are doing for lunch, and I wanted to have it. So there's a great example, I think, of a small business that's kicking the rear out of a lot of large businesses. And it's the owner's uh, intent to just engage people and make them exactly. feel welcome online, just like they are welcome in an ice cream shop. And doesn't cost her a dime, doesn't take a ton of time. And um, this peanut butter ice cream is pretty good. That's a great example. That's a great example of the nature of the business already being social and being connected, and therefore social media made sense. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to not be yourself in social media. If you're not yourself, it gets found out pretty quickly. If you're trying to be the happy-go-lucky on social media and you're not normally that way, it's hard to pull it off. It's not authentic. Yep. Kathy's this way anyway. So... Because that's the nature of her business, that's how it's going to come off. You know you're media. double dipping, right? Yeah, dude. No, this is yours. <laughs> this is yours. This is mine. We got hoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to the business or the um, political figure, the organization, the community group that says, oh, man, I'm not sure I want to get engaged in this because what if it blows up in my face? You don't have you know, it. As you soon as I start talking to these people, what if they all have complaints? What if they've got See, an a issue? a complaint is an opportunity. We, we tell the story. I don't even know if it's true anymore, but guess what? It doesn't matter. We tell the story of the, of the blogger back five or six years ago who's sitting in one of those horrible uh, plane on the tarmac moments where the bathrooms are filling up and it's boiling hot and they won't let you off the plane because of 9-11 and therefore we just have to sit there and somebody's going to jail if they try to get off the plane. And he gets mad, and because he happens to still have cell phone coverage, he writes a blog post about Southwest Air. I think he was on Southwest Air, and he butchers them. Well, it just so happens that Southwest, six or seven years ago, was one of the very first companies to engage what we call command center technology, which is they were listening. They're watching for Facebook posts and tweets and blog posts and things on websites that mention Southwest Air, and they're responding to them. They not only responded to him, they contacted him while he was still on the plane. They contacted the pilot. They solved the problem. Before he got off the plane, he had written a follow-up post. You know, this is all over a couple hours. He'd written a follow-up post talking about how amazing it was that this company had cared that this company had taken care of the situation. They probably gave them a bunch of free tickets, too. And that is what got all the publicity. We all hear bad things. We all hear negative, the, the customer's not happy, the, the service that wasn't provided. But when you hear about a company that went above and beyond to fix the problem, you'll tell hundreds of people that story. Hundreds. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have 500 million, people, 500 million people on Facebook, 70 million on LinkedIn, 200 million on Twitter, your clients are on those, and if you're not, what are they saying about you, and how do you, and are they saying good or bad things? Yep. If I'm going on there, and do you I'm, even know number yeah, one? Yeah, do, do you even two, know? How do you potentially respond? Yeah, so, so you got to be on there to do that at this point. I mean, we made this point earlier, and I've, I'm now I'm kind of backing away from my. I hate that I say this now. It's like it's better to have. I think it's better to have no social media than bad social media. But I think you have don't you don't have a choice but to be on it at this point because I'm on it and. 90% 90, 90 of your clients are on it right now, and they're saying something. It was like, you know, like the example I used earlier. There's a hardware store. They just set up a Facebook fan page. Well, they have a review coming in from somewhere, and it's a negative review, and they have not responded to it. It's, it's at least from July, June or July this year. 
And odds are they probably don't even know that it's And it's on their Facebook fan page, and it's a negative review. And it's like, I just read that, and I'm never going to take something that needs to be fixed to them because it already tells me they did it wrong the first time. Yep. So, I mean, you don't have a choice but to be on at this point. You can do it badly. I've read read, 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 read if you do it good. But you got to be on there. You got to be. You got to have your ear to the ground. You know, you got to have. You're like an Indian with your with your ear to the ground here in the buffalo. The buffalo are coming. Now your choice is either to listen to them and get up and move and do something about it, or we get trampled. I, I think I'll go back to an earlier point I made. I think this is an epic period where we're going to be talking about influencers, people who have an influence when they say something. When they drop the pebble in the pond, the the waves are much bigger. The ripples are much bigger. And we want to be able to engage in those conversations. The last thing anybody wants to do is go to a party and have everybody in the room talking about Mubarak and Egypt, and they missed the news for the last five days. That's a very uncomfortable thing. You want to be able to engage in the stories of your time, the the stories that matter. I think that you just hit the point on the head with, uh, to me, it's engagement. It's when do we actually really connect with somebody, and you're usually going to connect about something that's funny or touching or you know, urgent, uh, you know, newsworthy in nature. You want to connect with something that um, you feel like you need to be informed with. What's next? What do you see as a 2011, someone that's going to be very actively involved, somebody that needs to wake up and smell the coffee, a trend that we're going to see that maybe is just starting from 2000. The trend that's probably that, that I'm really focusing on that I'm probably seeing more of, and it's been out there for a while, that's just now starting to really catch up with the technology, is mobile. Yeah, local's great, Facebook, Twitter thing is great. Half of the people who are engaging on Facebook today are engaging because are, are engaging on their phone, whether it be an iPhone or an Android or a Blackberry. Uh, mobile is just is really starting to take off. If you don't understand it or aren't willing to capture that, you're, you're toast at this point. You're going to be toast. Following up on my earlier comments, you don't want to advertise any wider than you want to deliver. So if I'm a, a guy that does lawn care, and I'd really prefer to do lawn care within five miles of my house because I don't want to drive so far. I want to advertise within five miles of my house. And I think it's all going to be about the ability to deliver the smallest cone of geography that you can deliver your products to. That matters. And and only deliver marketing dollars there. I don't need to deliver a marketing dollar outside that sphere. I want to keep it in that sphere. So be that um, geographically based publications, be that things like Valpo Life, be it Foursquare and geographically based online sites, Groupon, which would be the couponing that comes out that's more geographically based, we're going to see tighter and tighter and tighter ability to focus marketing dollars. Um, One of the worst offenders of scratching the surface of social media, scratching the surface of new media, and then pretending that was good enough because I checked the box is the regular newspapers. They just still don't get the fact that they have the opportunity to be influencers and they're not doing it. They're not engaging. They're, and this isn't just our local media because, of course, they're going to be the ones that watch this video. This is nationwide. Media in general is not quite getting the new media gig. They, they don't know how to take advantage of their opportunity. Uh, anything else you want to touch on while we're all here? No, I, I think we're just starting to, to suggest that social media has uh, hit its high point and it's just going to be another tool in the arsenal. I think we're just starting to see the impact. I, I think that social media, like other technological advances over the last hundred years, will change the way business is done. Just like Henry Ford changed the way things were built, social media will change the way that we engage with society and the way that we make decisions about our purchases for many years to come. And the hard part is it changes quickly. The, the, the pace of play is fast. And it may require, just like other things in life, uh, somebody to help from the outside. Like you said, you know, I think there's a, there's a uh, statistic out there that 78% of people rely on recommendations from their friends for a certain product. Yep. And, and uh, social media is, is, is going to be a tool in that arsenal. Is it the only tool? No. But if there's, if you've got to have three or four or five things all focused in on a certain message, and you got to go with it. It's not a push button. It's, it's not a push button system. You do need someone there manning the helm at some point, whether it's a part time, full time. At least you got to have eyes on it because your customers are there. It's your job to be there as well. If not, just shut the doors now. 
Where can someone learn a little bit more about your perspectives and what you do? Uh, there's I got two websites. That's DaveWoodson.com, and and uh, that's D. Well, you can spell Woodson easily. And the other one's Get You Noticed, and that's G E T, the letter U, Noticed.com. That's that's my two that I'm pushing. The, that, that's that's me at this point. Great. Um, How about yourself? Golden Technologies website, golden-tech, T-E-C-H.com. And yourself, personally? You know, I'm all over. Anytime you search Dalton's Briefs with an S in the middle, Dalton's Briefs, you'll get three or four pages of Google results that include places I've been and places I'm sitting and places I'm lurking. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much for being with us today. Uh, we look forward to bringing you some other roundtable discussions on other areas of community, sports, entertainment, business, other fun topics throughout Northeast Indiana. Thanks very much. Thank you.